Day five of our Arlington Pony Express was 28 September. We were starting out of the La Quinta Look Hotel in Terre Haute, Indiana, and we were ending the day at the Econo Lodge in Triadelphia, West Virginia. Total distance for the day, 385 miles. Most of those miles were to be made on Interstate 70. We would go through Terre Haute and Indianapolis, Indiana, Dayton, Columbus, and Cambridge, Ohio, then on to Wheeling, West Virginia, and then ending at Triadelphia, West Virginia. We left the La Quinta Hotel just as the sun was coming up. As with every other state, we added some Indiana Patriot Guard riders to our procession. We had 20 or more riders in the escort as we left the hotel, headed for Interstate 70 in Indianapolis, about 60 miles. This day's video will be a little different from the last you've seen. You won't see the two dignified transfers at the beginning and end of the day, nor will you see the fuel stops along the way. There's a reason for this. A surprise promised to us by the Indiana State Patriot Guard Riders Captain Bob Patterson. I'll provide more information about that as the video goes on. one, we would have law enforcement leading us all the way across the state of Indiana. See those clouds off in the distance? The weather report was for rain all along our route for the day. To this end, most every rider started the day wearing some type of rain gear. We figured better safe than sorry. Those who did not soon would. We chased that rainstorm for the entire day. As we entered Indianapolis, close to the Indianapolis airport, we saw surprise number two. All entrances to the freeway that we were riding on would be blocked across the entire city 
a distance of about 30 miles. We would be the only eastbound traffic allowed on the interstates until we got to the other side of Indianapolis. I am unable to show every on-ramp that was secured. There are just too many of them. But for anyone having endured rush hour traffic, I did include a few so you would see what riding on a completely empty freeway at rush hour was really like. We spent 47 and a half minutes traveling across Indianapolis, a total distance of about 28 miles. If that seems slow, wait until you see the traffic we avoided. From here on, pay attention to the westbound traffic on our left, as well as the number of cars that were blocked, blocked on the on-ramps. I have to believe we would have faced the same level of congestion on the eastbound side if it had not been for the police and sheriff's officers that protected us while driving through Indianapolis.
This was something that impressed me. All the traffic pulled over to the right and stopped, respecting the emergency vehicle with lights and siren. Bless all those drivers for doing what they are supposed to do. So many drivers don't. And then we were on our own again after one last protected on-ramp. In reality, there were probably 30 or 40 on-ramps closed down for us so that we could make a safe and timely transit through Indianapolis. A great big thank you to the men and women taking care of us as well as they did for that 40 minutes or so. Thanks again.
Once we hit Ohio, it was 224 miles to West Virginia. We did lose our Indiana PGR members, but we picked up riders from Ohio just across the Indiana-Ohio border. They had a different way of riding. Some would ride in the staggered formation, while one or two would block the second lane on the interstate. the Ohio River into West Virginia at Wheeling, and the landscape changed almost immediately. Where most of Ohio was flat farmland, West Virginia was immediately hill country. At this point, we were only about five or seven miles to our hotel, but that five or seven miles was really quite beautiful. We did finally get a sprinkle of that rain we'd been expecting all day, but it was not too bad yet. I was pretty sure we would catch the storm before now, but I was wrong.
Our hotel was on top of a hill that overlooked Triadelphia. This came off immediately upon reaching the hotel. Unpack the motorcycle and check into the hotel. And then the rain came. Yes, I did rescue the camera and cover up the motorcycle before 